Hey everyone, it's been a while since my last video. Today I will be covering one of the best healers in the game. To many new players, she is your go-to unit and will be very helpful in a majority of your runs. As you can see in the title, I'm talking about Angelica. Now she's a member of the Conclave and is the High Priestess of the Holy Order of the Blue Cross. Her healing is just ridiculously good. And if you get her very early, or in your selective summons, she can carry you to end game with little problems. Well, as long as you have a decent DPS to go along with it, you should be good. Or you can be like me and add high level players whenever they show up, and just use the heck out of them to carry you through the campaign. Problem solved. She is a solid healer and tank due to her heal scaling which is proportional to her max HP. It's a 2 in 1 roll, so how can you say no to that? Like my other how to build videos, I'll walk you through her skills, gears and artifacts you can use as well as applications for Angelica. Angelica's first skill is Holy Strike and has a 20% chance to stun the target. It is very low and it's better not to rely or think too much about it. Consider yourself surprised when she actually stuns someone. Her skill enhance doesn't help much with this since it only increases the hit chance up to 25%. Stun is really good but not important in both PvE and PvP content. In PvE it is useless against bosses since pretty much all of them have immunity against stun. But in some runs there are minions alongside the boss that are better off locked down to give you a big advantage. In PvP, stun can screw up new compositions and even lock down high priority targets. But since Angelica has such a low stun chance, it is not reliable and has very little value. Angelica's second skill, Origin of Life, is her go-to healing skill. At a cooldown of two turns, she can heal up to two units, one is the target, and the second one targets the unit with the least HP. So what happens if the target unit is also the one with the least amount of HP? Well, she will heal twice on that same target and that's what makes this skill very, very strong. Healing scales based on Angelica's max HP, so the more HP she has, the more healing she will do. What's interesting about this skill is that it has two uses, heal a single target that has taken a lot of beating, usually tanks or do a more widespread healing that can target up to two units. However, if you haven't awakened her at least three times, this skill will only heal the target. If you just got her and want to use her right away, the first thing in my opinion that you should do is blow all your blue penguins on her, get her to level 30, and awaken her three times. It should cost you, uh, let's see, uh, eight small runes. Total of 20 small and two greater. Last one is 37 small and 10 greater runes. Okay. This may take a while for new players to farm these, but you know, doing a few floors in Abyss can meet the requirements very easily. This skill's effect is way too good to pass and will really help a lot the faster you have her awakened. Now, her last skill, Guide of the Goddess, is one of those healing skills that you have to be very careful when to use. It has an AoE heal and grants both immunity and barrier for two turns, both of which are very essential in most runs. Like S2, healing is proportional to the caster's max HP. Now consuming 20 soul burn will extend these buffs by an additional 2 turns. This is definitely worth it, especially against bosses that throws a lot of annoying debuffs. Plus, with this cooldown at 5 turns, this gives you a 1 turn cooldown downtime. Now, when using this skill, you have to think about which you should prioritize more, either immunity or heal, based on the run you are doing or the current state of your team. If you are doing a run that requires good timing of immunity, 
then you will have to use S2 instead. If S2 is in cooldown, then you will have to judge for yourself whether your team can survive another turn to use S2. If you have no choice but to use S3 to keep your team alive, it's not all that bad, but it may make your run slower. For skill enhance, it's hands down to S3, at least to plus 3 for the turn decrease. The good thing about getting this first is that when you use Soul Burn on this skill, you will get buffs that goes for 4 turns. This matches the new cooldown of this skill at 4 turns, which means by the time the buff expires on Angelica, S3 will be available for use again. Now I said specifically expires on Angelica, because I don't want to mislead you by saying your DPS will always be safe on your hands just because of its availability. If your DPS have insane speed or extra turns, buffs will expire faster compared to Angelica. If you are only using her occasionally, you can stop there, but if you want to bring her to endgame content such as Asmakali's raid and health challenges, or even bringing her to scale the PvP ladder, you might want to consider investing on her S2 to increase her healing effects by up to 40% max. Since Angelica can heal up to 2 units, each heal will gain from this benefit, so it's definitely worth getting. When gearing Angelica, the first and foremost thing that you have to think about is giving her enough HP for two reasons. The most important one is because all her healing scales on her max HP. The more HP she has, the better. Now this leads us to the second reason. Since she has a lot of HP, you kinda have no choice but to gear her as a tank. I mean, you wanna put that HP to good use, right? For new players, the best gear sets for Angelica is either 3x health set or 2x health set and defense set. This is because both health and defense sets are pretty easy to get just by doing a few labyrinth runs on Tyrell Castle as an example. The other choice is doing low golem hunt stages, minimum at stage 4. When you reach mid to late game progression, it's best to change two of your health sets to a speed set. Now only use speed set if you have decent amount of HP from its substats. For me, in my opinion, the baseline should be around 10k HP before you change from health to speed set. Now this leads us to a question. Is speed set, which requires 4 gears, better than 2 health sets? Speed set gives us 25% more speed, which is around 22 extra speed for Angelica, while 2 health sets gives you 30% HP. That's around 76 HP at level 1 full star to 1710 extra HP at max level and fully awakened. Whichever you need more or if you value one over the other, you can go with that choice. For substats, you should prioritize HP percentage and speed. Secondary should be a mix of defense percentage, effect resistance, and effectiveness. However, effectiveness should be the least priority in my opinion. This is because the only thing that gets value from effectiveness is her stun from S1. Because her S1 stun chance is so low, it's not really worth it. Okay, now for the artifacts. There are a number of them that you can use. Some of them are situational depending on the nature of the run that you are doing. The best 5 star artifact for general use is Shimadra Staff since it increases all of Angelica's healing effects by 20% up to 40% max. The reason why this works for her is because her S2 has a very low cooldown of 2 turns, letting her take advantage of this artifact's effect a lot more compared to other Soul Weavers. Furthermore, this artifact has a global effect which means life steals from skills and gear sets from other units also benefits from this artifact. The other 5 star artifact is Idol's Cheer. This artifact increases the combat readiness of your main DPS, or specifically, one with the highest attack stat, 
whenever Angelica gets attacked. Now why is this good? Angelica's healing is already good as it is. The only time when you need to use Shimadra stuff or other artifacts that provide extra healing is when your Angelica cannot keep up with the damage your team is taking. This may be due to her having low HP stat, which affects her healing, not enough speed, or you didn't skill enhance her healing skills. If this is the case, stick to Shimadra stuff. Then we have Rod of Amaryllis and Celestine. These two are not that great. This is because Celestine heals when using basic attack. In Angelica's case, the only time when you're using S1 is when the rest of her skills are in cooldown. Rod of Amaryllis is decent, but if you compare this to other available artifacts, you'd rather choose the latter. Angelica already has solid heals in her kit, so the only time you would need to use this is the same as what I said before about Shimadra. For 4 star artifacts, you can use Water's Origin to give Angelica some layer of survivability and tankiness. Whenever Angelica takes damage that exceeds 20% of her max HP, she will recover 8% HP and 10% combat readiness, up to 20% at max. This is a perfect artifact for a tanky Soul Weaver. That 8% HP recovery is a big deal, especially for Angelica since she will have high HP. The additional combat readiness covers for her low speed and gives her a boost in turn. This is the one artifact I mostly use for Angelica. Another good one is Magahara's Tome, which increases her combat readiness by 15% up to 30% when using a skill that doesn't attack enemies. Angelica has two skills, S2 and S3, that benefits from this artifact. What's good about this is that her S2 has a low cooldown, so it gets more value from this artifact. This is great for Angelica users who geared her without speed set or if her speed is very low compared to the rest of her team. For 3 star artifacts, the only one I would recommend to use is Prophetic Candlestick. It has a 20% up to 40% chance to decrease cooldown of her skills by 1 when attacked. However, it only triggers once per turn. The great thing about this artifact is that if it does trigger, you can pretty much spam her S2. Angelica has the second highest base HP sitting at 5700 HP at max, with Destina being the top at around 6k HP. Considering she is a 4 star unit, this puts her above compared to other 5 star soul weavers. This is one of the reasons why Angelica can be used as a main tank. However, she does have a low speed stat of 88, which is a shame since immunity on S3 is best used first if you want to nullify debuffs from the opposing team. The good side is that it can be easily fixed with a speed set or decent amount of speed from substats. Angelica is one of the top healers in the game, as of right now in my opinion, especially for early game progression. When you reach around mid to late game, she's still viable in Abyss, Events, Wyvern Hunt, heck anything really. Although I would sit her out when versing Queen in Asmakali's raid, since Queen can force Angelica's skills in cooldown if she gets hit. This occurs more often if she's in the front. Now, there is a debate between Angelica and Destina, you know, about which one is better. If we compare each of their skills, I think Angelica's total healing output is better strictly because of her low cooldown on her S2, as well as the fact that it can heal twice. However, what she doesn't have compared to Destina is combat readiness. Destina can control her team's attack order, which is vital to nuke teams, since they do require setup. Now Angelica's S3 has immunity which is best used early to block incoming debuffs. The downside to this is that you might be wasting the heals that this skill provides. It may not be that bad because of her S2, but it's still a demerit in itself. The barrier also adds a layer of protection to your team and what's good about this is that barriers have no limit. For example, if an ally is fully healed from S3, the barrier will add on top of their max HP. 
With Soulburn, you can extend the duration up to four turns. Compared to Destina's S3, it dispels all debuffs and each ally gains combat readiness per each debuff dispelled. This means that you would use this after being bombarded with debuffs. This makes sense because at this point, your team would be taking some form of damage which Destina can heal back up using the skill, with the addition of combat readiness. Picking between Destina and Angelica all depends on the dungeon you are doing. I mean, don't get me wrong, any of them can be used and it will work either way, but one performs better over the other in certain runs. For Angelica, you need to know beforehand how to tackle the boss, since timing on her S3 is pretty important. While for Destina, if your team gets tons of debuffs, it's there, you can see it, and you know what to do. The advantage that Angelica has is, if you are dealing with bosses who constantly add debuffs to your team, immunity is the best option. Now let's talk about Angelica in PvP. In my opinion, she's pretty good. If you can't deal with cleave teams, just give Angelica a speed set or bring her first by increasing her combat readiness. With the help of units like Shuri, SE Ruzid, or even Emma Lotz, and use her S3. Immunity and Barrier will eat half of what they throw at your team, giving you a chance to counter and pick them off one by one, or however you've built your PvP team. I have been in a few sad situations where I'll be stuck dealing with Angelica that refuses to die, and I only have one DPS left to deal with her. It's... it's not a good thing. If I had a second DPS or a buffer, then I'll have a chance of fighting Angelica, but a 1v1 is not a good idea. And that's all I have for Angelica Guide. Thank you guys for watching and sticking to the end. I hope this gave you enough information on how to build and use Angelica. Like and subscribe if you like the content and I'll see you in another Epic 7 video. Cheers!